Hello friends, welcome to my chemical engineering YouTube channel. Today we are going to learn some basic chemical principles before dealing with chemical process calculations. First we understand what is the basis of calculation. It is very important in solving the problems on material and energy balances of a given process. Hence, before we start solving the problems on material and energy balances of a given process, we must assume a suitable basis on which further calculations are based. The assumption of basis of calculation must be some specific quantity or composition of flow rate of a stream entering or leaving the process. If the flow rate is specified as a basis in the problem, assume it as a basis of calculation. If the basis is not specified in the problem, assume a suitable basis which will simplify the given problem. While assuming a new basis of calculation, we have to see that it must contain the maximum amount of information of the process. Next, we come to method of expressing the composition of mixtures. Various methods are used to express the composition of mixtures of solids, liquids and gases. The methods given here are explained by considering a system composed of two components, namely A and B. Same methods are used for system containing more than two components. The compositions can be expressed in weight percent, volume percent and mole percent. First we take mass percent. It is the mass of any component expressed as the percentage of total mass of the system. Second we take volume percent. It is the pure component volume of any component expressed as a percentage of the total volume of the system. Third is mole percent. It is the moles of any component expressed as the percentage of the total moles of the system. Next we comes to equivalent weight. It is defined as the ratio of the atomic weight or molecular weight to its valency. Then we comes to concept of normality, molarity and molality. There are three ways of expressing the concentration of solution containing either solid or liquid solute, namely normality, molarity and molality. First we understand what is normality. Normality can be defined as the number of gram equivalents of solute dissolved in 1 liter of solution. It is designated by the symbol capital N. Second, we understand what is molarity. It is defined as the number of gram moles of the solute dissolved in 1 liter of solution. It is designated by the symbol capital M. Third, we understand molality. It is defined as the gram moles of the solute dissolved in 1 kilogram of solvent. Next, we come to the concept of ppm. It is the short form of parts per million, that is, parts of one substance present in million parts of another substance, especially solvent. It is commonly used as a unit of concentration. Concentration may be defined as the amount of solute present in known amount of solvent. Generally, the method of expressing the composition in ppm is used specifying the contents of tracing impurities in solids or liquids. Now we understand some laws applicable for gaseous state. While dealing with substances existing in the gaseous state, the relationship among the temperature, pressure, mass and volume must be known. First we take Boyle's law. According to Boyle's law for a given mass of an ideal gas, the product of the pressure and volume is constant at a constant temperature, that is, P into V equals to constant. Next is Charles' law. According to Charles' law, for a given mass of an ideal gas, the ratio of the volume to temperature is constant at a given pressure, that is, V by T equals to constant. On combining these two laws, we get the expression for an ideal gas law as PV equals to NRT where R is the universal gas constant and N is the number of moles. Next is Dalton's law, which states that the total pressure exerted by the gases mixture is equal to the sum of the partial pressures of component gases. That is, capital P equals to small p a plus p b plus p c, where small p is partial pressure, which is the pressure in the mixture of gases that would be exerted by that component gases if they were present in the same volume and temperature. Next is Amiget's law. 
it states that the total volume occupied by the gaseous mixture is equal to the sum of the pure component volume. That is capital V equals to small v a plus v b plus v c. Where small v is pure component volume which is the volume that would be occupied by that component gases if they were present at the same pressure and temperature as the mixture. Then we come to relationship between partial pressure and mole fraction of component gas in total pressure. The composition of component gases present in gas mixture is generally expressed in terms of volume percent. In case of gas mixture containing in closed vessel, the molecules of each component gases are distributed throughout the entire volume of the container. The total pressure exerted by the entire mixture is equal to the sum of pressure exerted by each component gas. From the ideal gas law, we know that Pv equals to nRT. On rearranging this equation, we get P equals to nRT by V. Writing this equation in terms of different components, we get Pa equals to Na into RT by V. Similarly, Pb equals to Nb into RT by V and Pc equals to Nc into RT divided by V. Applying these three equations, adding these three equations, we get capital P equals to small Pa plus Pb plus Pc equals to Na plus Nb plus Nc into R into T divided by V. Dividing equation third by equation six, we get Pa divided by Pa plus Pb plus Pc equals to Na into RT divided by V whole divided by Na plus Nb plus Nc into RT by V. On simplifying above equation, we get Pa by Pa plus Pb plus Pc equals to Na by Na plus Nb plus Nc. Multiplying both sides of this equation by 100, we get Pa by Pa plus Pb plus Pc into 100 equals to Na by Na plus Nb plus Nc into 100. That is pressure percent equals to mole percent. From equation 8, we get Pa by P equals to X. On rearranging, we get Pa equals to X into P. When ideal gas law is applicable, it can be written for gas components A, B and C as P into VA equals to NA into RT. Similarly, P into VB equals to NB into RT and P into VC equals to NC into RT. Adding above three equations, we get P into VA plus VB plus VC equals to NA plus NB plus NC into R into T. Dividing equation 13 by equation 16, we get P into VA divided by P into VA plus VB plus VC equals to Na into RT divided by Na plus Nb plus Nc into RT. On rearranging this equation, we get Va by Va plus Vb plus Vac equals to Na divided by Na plus Nb plus Nc. Multiplying both sides of this equation by 100, we get Va by Va plus Vb plus Vc into 100 equals to Na by Na plus Nb plus Nc into 100. That is volume percent equals to mole percent. Combining equation 10 and 20, we get pressure percent equals to mole percent equals to volume percent. Then we come to average molecular weight of gas mixture. It is the sum of the products of molecular weight and mole fraction of component gases. It can be expressed as M average equals to summation I equals to 1 to N, Mi into Xi. Then we come to density of gas mixture. It can be easily calculated by the use of ideal gas law at a given temperature and pressure of the gas mixture. For calculating the density, one must know the average molecular weight of the gas mixture. From the ideal gas law, we know that Pv equals to nRT. Or we can say that P by RT equals to N by V. It can be written as P by RT equals to N into 1 by V. Where N can be replaced and written as the ratio of weight of gas mixture in kg divided by average molecular weight. Then uh, in short average molecular weight can be written as M into average. M average. 
Therefore, the equation becomes Pm average by Rt equals to weight of gas mixture in kg divided by V. The ratio on the right side is known as the density of the gas mixture. Therefore, we can write P into M average by Rt equals to rho mix, where rho mix is the density of the gas mixture, which is equals to pressure into average molecular weight divided by R into temperature. Next is non-ideal behavior of gases. In order to account for non-ideal behavior of gases, when there was proposed an equation of the state as P plus A by V square into V minus B equals to RT. The values of constant A and B depends on the gas and hence can be evaluated using the following equations as A equals to 27 into R square into TC square divided by 64 into TC and B equals to R into TC divided by 8 into TC where TC and TC are critical pressure and temperature respectively. The critical temperature is the maximum temperature at which a gas can be liquefied. The critical pressure is the saturation pressure corresponding to the critical temperature. Above the critical temperature, a gas cannot be liquefied regardless of the pressure. And the volume occupied by a gas under critical condition is called the critical volume. Next we come to gas liquid system, the approximate relationship that governs the distribution of a substance between a gas and a liquid phase are Raoult's law and Henry's law, which assume reasonably accurate results in many cases. First we can take Raoult's law. It states that the equilibrium partial pressure of component A is equal to the product of vapor pressure and more fraction of component A in the liquid phase. It can be expressed as PA equals to PA0 into XA equals to P into YA. Raoult's law is generally valid when XA is close to 1, that is when the liquid phase is almost pure. Next is Henry's law. It states that the partial pressure of solute gas is proportional to mole fraction of that component in liquid phase. It can be expressed as P equals to H into XA equals to P into YA. Henry's law is valid when XA is close to 0, that is, for dilute solution of component A. Thank you for watching and please like, share, and subscribe my YouTube channel.